Take it and turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1 to 11. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Here begin the reading of God's Word. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, all over Lagos. And I've taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I don't want to do it. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And when and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship. That it shall come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. So also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought the ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. My contemplation is in the sixth verse. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Help me tell someone beside you, get ready for your biggest break. Look for three more persons and tell them. Get ready for your biggest break. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the privilege to be gathered before your word. This is your eternal, infallible, immutable word. Of your integrity and your character. We ask you that you will breathe upon this word. Cause it to achieve its purpose in our life. We open our hearts and ask you to feed us and fill us with your word. Let this word come with life and with power. To bring about supernatural transformation. And ultimately bring about a breaking forth in significant areas of our life. For your man servant I hide behind the cross. And I ask you to grant me grace to speak as an oracle for the edification, inspiration and exhortation of your great people this morning. I trust in your ability and in your power to bring forth your counsel as you designed. That this house might be edified, encouraged, empowered to their God-ordained destiny. 
that these will give you glory and a praise. For we know you are going to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask in or imagine. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the way to your seat, let me tell somebody again, get ready for your biggest break. Amen. And you might please be seated in God's wonderful presence. Brothers and sisters, I need to say to you that the strength of a man's life is determined by the strength of his promise. A man cannot amount higher, bigger, greater than the promise God has assigned or proclaimed over his life. Help me tell somebody there's a promise over your life. It becomes imperative then that you understand the ramifications and the implications of the promise of God on your life. Because that understanding is pivotal to how you become in life. It is pivotal to how you become significant and influential to the times and to your generation. Nothing reveals the strength, the stability, and the invisibility of that promise as to the challenges, the complexities, and the crises that buffet such a promise on his way to fulfillment. That is why when God gets ready to do the most impossible thing on the earth, the stage will be set against uh, the most ambiguous, the most flawed, the most incomprehensible and incompatible parameters. Such that the soul that is in the middle of the puzzle is tucked between the situation on one hand and the intent of God on the other. Now our lives today may seem nice to the person sitting beside you, but if you were to tell the true stories, there are some complication areas of your life. And the challenge is not just about complications. But in particular areas, there are some complications you can't turn a blind eye to. And it's the duty of leadership. Its chiefest responsibility is the unbundling of the complications of the lives that they is superintended over. That process is what always leads to the discovery of purpose of the people. An effective leadership is such that keeps moving the goalposts once a previous goal is achieved. The staring up of the nest is an ongoing process to a leader who desires to evolve his people from glory to glory. It's a never-ending exercise. Little wonder when you come to church, you leave not feeling condemned, but rather challenged to see more and do more with your life. This consistent and continuous process is what brought you this far in your work of faith and that will take you further. Our father in the faith is such a leader that every time you try to attain a goal he sets, before you are done with it, he comes up with another. It all began somewhere on Moladeo Koya. And when we felt we had prayed the house down, moved out to a Latunji house. And then you get there, we got there, we're feeling cool that we're making progress. He began dreaming of the Muson Center. And then we got there, stayed some years, feeling that we have attained a goal. He began dreaming of the Rock Cathedral. The first thing that comes to your mind is, now that we are here, what next? It just seems he never stops dreaming. But can I tell you, if he has stopped dreaming, you will have stopped growing. 
it's very critical for the size of your assignment to determine what voice speaks over your life. Whilst we're celebrating the cathedral, now he's dreaming of Africa. Only God knows what next. That's why we have the African charter right across me. And the Bible says, write the vision down, make it plain upon tables, that he that reads it might run. Your speed in life is determined by what you are reading. What is getting into you? Your speed in destiny, speed in your career, speed in your ministry, or whatever your endeavor is, is tied directly to what you are ingesting. I don't know about you, but I came to be unbundled. Because this life is more like a cycle. We have our daily chores, wake up in the morning, take a bath, have some food, get to work, uh, maybe get married, have children, and the cycle keeps going on. Nothing strange about the cycle, but the trouble is, when the cycle becomes boring, and there's once in a while, it looks totally unreasonable. And if you are part of the cycle, somewhere it frustrates you. I have a little girl. One day she comes back from school. And I see her sobbing over the table. And I ask her, I said, Excel, how are you? She didn't answer me. And she was crying. And I asked her, I said, why are you crying? She said... I can't seem to make headway with my assignment. And there are too many people here who are privately crying because you are unable to make a headway with your assignment. And you know you never get promoted in life until you are able to be successful with the assignment that has been placed over your life. I don't have a problem being frustrated in every area of life. But I do have a problem to be frustrated in my assignment or in my area of core competence. I can walk away from every complication of life, but there are certain complications that I just can't work away. If you have a complication with your kidneys, you won't walk away. If you have a complication with your heart, you can't turn a blind eye to that. You have a complication with your lungs, you can't walk away from that. You have a complication with your business. There are just some things that have to be fixed. In our text, Peter is introduced to us as a fisherman the other disciples someone like Luke the apostle that we read from today he was a physician the other Simon was a custom officer but Peter is a fisherman and he comes from Capernaum and all he had known all his life was to fish That's what he grew up to see and grew up to do. So you can understand the background that we are talking this morning. And the Bible says, Jesus shows up in his space. This morning, God has shown up in your space. It makes no difference what that space is. The important thing is that he has suddenly shown up in your space. And can I announce to you, before he gets out of that space, 
something I can describe. Something I can articulate. Something I don't know how will happen in your life. But I bet you he ain't leaving your space the way he met your space. And the Bible says he, uh, he gets to this lake and sees two sheep standing by the lake. And the fishermen were gone out of them. And now he enters into one of the ships, which was Simon's. And I was going to think that he was going to fix the problem of Peter right away. But it looks like he turned a blind eye. How many of you know what it feels like? That God is turning a blind eye to the most obvious. If you had a chance. To meet somebody influential. The first thing that comes to your mind is. By the time I show up, he should be able to see this. But in our text, it looks like Jesus paid no attention. How many times have you ever felt abandoned? Not everybody. But how many people have been through some complications in your life? You know what I'm saying? You would have expected that the first thing Jesus will do is to fix the problem before using the boat. No. He is using the boat before fixing the problem. Too many times we say, Lord, can't you see? Let me ask the real people who have had complications in their life. Let me see your hand. How many of us know what it is like? Uh, you know, your life has some complications. Let me see. Just wave a bit. Just wave a bit. You know, they see us today. They don't know where we're coming from. Uh, but we had some complications. You know what? If somebody says to you, you ask them a question. So, uh, are you married? They said, uh, I'm married. But, you know, uh, some complications there. Uh, are you single? And they said, um, I am, um, yes, no. Well, uh, yeah, some complications there. Uh, do you have a job? Uh, um, uh, not, yes, but uh, uh, someone say amen here. <laughs> Can I get some real people here? Uh, you know, there, there are some of you that were born with a golden spoon. Then there are others that were born with a silver spoon. Then some were born with a wooden spoon. But there are some of us that had no spoon. You know, when you, when you, were, you were born, you know, some of you went to uh, uh, pre, pre-nursery. You went to the crash. You went to kindergarten. Some of us went by direct entry. LEA primary school had no idea about anything called a nursery. You know what it was like when you were born, uh, your family was so blessed. You, you had a timetable what you ate in the morning. Uh, you had some coca oats and then uh, uh, some bakings by the side. Then by noon, you had some fried jollof rice. Then by evening, you had some sandwiches for dinner. Oh my goodness. Some of us We knew exactly what breakfast was It was the same thing at noon It was the same thing Can I get a witness from alumni? Oh Complications Mm. Tell your neighbor if I told you where I am coming from. <laughs> Let me give you a few seconds. Tell your neighbor the real village, as in the real, real. 
Not where you live in Lekki, but your real. Tell him. Say it. Can you remember the name? But now look at you. And if I find myself in this situation, the first reaction would be that if Jesus gets into my house, he's got to fix my most obvious need. Lord, can't you see I'm single? Can't you see I don't have a husband? Can't you see I don't have a child? I don't have this. I don't have that. But notice what Jesus does. Gets in the boat, sits in the boat, and begins to use the boat. How many of you know what it is like when God is using you for people? You know, they say you can pray very well. You pray for them. They get healed. And when you are sick, it looks like God is deaf. Many times, God must first of all have his way before you have your way. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then every other thing shall be what? But Peter... In spite of the fact that Jesus said nothing about his situation, he kept him in the boat anyways. Help me tell somebody, keep him in the boat. No, say, say, keep him in the boat. I know it don't look, but keep him in the boat. It doesn't look nice, but keep him in the boat. Because hear me, child of God, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word keep coming to church keep attending the church in the home keep coming for the visuals keep coming for the midweek service attend the woman to woman or attend the corpus fellowship because your peculiar situation will take more than a one-time hearing Can I get a witness? I grew up going to school in 1980 to 85. Federal Government College, worry. And my father was giving me every time for the five years, every time, 30 naira. 20 naira was a transport fare. Out of the 10 naira, I must buy soap, buy toothpaste, and then use two naira to eat all the way from Kafanchan to worry for a whole session. When I grew up, I never went to school with what they call provisions. Ah. Am I talking to somebody here? At that level of poverty, if you are going to come up, my goodness. One hearing will not be enough because my grandfather was broke. My great-grandfather broke. My uncle broke. Everything around me broke, 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 broke. That's why it looks elusive. You are trying to crawl out of your way. You have no idea how many monkeys were on your family tree. What does the Bible say? They go from strength to strength everyone in zion appeared before god strength to strength every time you come to church something breaks when you come on wednesday something breaks when you come for the vigil something breaks maybe your neighbor is not in the mess but can i get a witness who know you need more than one touch Keep him in the boat. One word wouldn't do it. And now God is using your boat. But saying nothing about your obvious need. God is using you as a worker in this church. 
you still are not living in a house of your own. We use your car for the conference. And your company is not growing. We use your time. We use your energy. And your resource. And it looks like God isn't moving. But let me say this to you. There are some things that God must frustrate to get your attention. That's when you call on God. You know, there's a calling that you call. That is, um, as our father would say, Oh, thou most gracious heavenly father. We thank you for, for us. Help! I got sick and tired of being broke. Then I began to pray, Pastor GC. I prayed. And prayed my heart out. Because I had nobody to turn to. Not an uncle, not an in-law, not a, a cousin, nobody. But I had to call him. And I would pray for six hours. Every day. And then one brother said to me, you are praying too much. I said, if you can fix it, go ahead, fix it. And if you can't fix it, leave me alone. (laughs) You know something? When God frustrates your income, you will come to church. When God, and you know, God knows exactly where to send you. You know, for some of you, what God may need to do is to make your phone get stolen. And you go into a freak. For some of you, maybe it's your car that someone hit from the backside. That's when you know that God is. There there are some of you here, the only way God could get you to pray was I didn't have a baby till after five years. He knows you like the back of your hand. And the Bible says, he left speaking. I sense his presence. Can I announce to somebody in the balcony? The time of speaking is over. The time of performance is here. Somebody in the choir. You have been hearing God over and over again. But I announce to you in the name of Jesus. The next voice you hear. You are one step away from your biggest break. One service away from your biggest turnaround. One word away. When he had left speaking. He turned around. And said to Simon, I'm glad. Many are called. But can I find the chosen people in this house this morning? I know my brother is called. I know my sister is called. But can I get a witness from somebody who knows you are the chosen for the biggest break of a lifetime? What was it? He left speaking. Sometimes you looked like God was too slow. But hear this. What Jesus was about to tell Peter. If he had told him the first time he got in the boat. He would never have believed. Follow me with a man Peter. Was the same man that said Jesus. If it is you. Tell me to come on the water. He was the first to walk on the water. Some of the time, they were asking for tax. And he said to Peter, Go to the sheep, to the sea, try in the hook, the first fish that comes out, take it out. Hear me, child of God. Whilst it looks like God is turning a blind eye, He is doing what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. 
what has never entered the imaginations of men's heart. That is what God has pre. When he had left speaking, he knows you by name. Not everyone, many are called. And if Jesus was going to get Peter to do something, the only way was to shout. Because he had over 5,000 people in the audience. If I'm going to get any of you in this audience to do something significant, Pastor G, give me a name. Just anybody that you know is in church. If I say, Biodun, but there are many Biodun's here. I must add the son name, middle name, last name, grandfather's name. But can I say to you, there is no detail of your life that God doesn't have it in his database. And if Jesus was going to get Simon to respond, he had to lift his voice and shout it because there were over 5,000 listening in his audience. And this morning, God is calling somebody by name. God is calling somebody's business by name. What did he say to him? Launch out into the deep for a dwarf. Now here comes the critical defining moment. He said, Jesus, you know we, we for you are free. We be water people. We have fished all the night and caught nothing. That's why you came, we are washing our nest. It says, Nevertheless, at thy word. We are observing push this year, and we did it for 40 days. And then we close it up with a communion service. There was a gentleman that had a problem of polio when he was young and lost the use of one of his legs. Then had an accident and the second leg becomes paralyzed. And all through the time, he cobbles up to church with his sticks. And after the communion service, we began praying for those who needed healing. He has been hearing the word, yes. But this time around, I walk over the way he was sitting. And I say to him, in the name of Jesus, I command life on both legs. In an instant, the legs began to shake like a rattlesnake. Then I took the crutches out. And I said, rise up. He stood up. I said, in the name of Jesus, walk. By one word, he began to move. The crutches are in the church office. You don't, you are one word away from your biggest break. You are one word away from a turnaround. You are one word away. I know you have tried. Do it again. I know you have prayed. Pray again. I know you have tried to have the baby. Meet your wife after the service. Mm. You apply for the same job. Hear me, child of God. The net Jesus was talking about was not another net. The same net. Oh, I said the same net. The same net. The same business. The same wife. The same boss. The same house on the rock. Same relationship. I know it looks like it never worked. But you see, why do we keep preaching the word to you? To inspire faith. So that the same things that you did that didn't work before. Now must work. Why? Because previously you were casting without a word. Previously, you were laboring without a word. But now you are armed with a promise 
from a God who cannot lie. So has he said it? Shall he not do it? Has he spoken? Will he not bring it to pass? It's in the power of his word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God abides forever. So he says, I don't want to do it. Many times, people who had a miracle from God, they will tell you, that was not the first time I heard that. Some of you are expecting a new net. Don't believe God for another husband. <laughs> Don't believe God for another wife. I know you've been 10 years, 20 years. The same net, the same boat, the same sea. You will prosper in this same Lagos. I said you will prosper in this same Lagos. Shout yes. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. You will prosper in the same business. I can't hear you. It's not another business. The same business. The same business. On the same address. Shout yes if you believe. Oof. Pastor GC, they told me when I entered Josh that this is a dry town. That's what they said. They said people are closing church and are leaving there you are entering. I said I came with a word. I have a word. Tell the neighbor I might not have what you have, but I have a word. I might not be driving what you are driving, but I have a word. I might not be living where you are living, but I have a word. If you have a word, say, I have a word. And if that word says you are going to get married, you will get. Oh, come on now. Abraham and his girlfriend Sarah, she was, she was 75. And if God says he began with him at 75, you are too young to complain. And he says, cast the nets into the deep. Hear me, people of God. Where you are is too shallow. Let me explain it. From the word net, you get the word network. If God don't break your present network, what he has for you, you can't carry all. The reason why you are where you are, because they say to us that your network determines your net. Even Jesus went to business school. So he says, cast the net into the deep for a drought. This time around, in the name of Jesus... This time around, I announce to somebody here, according to the time of life, in the name of Jesus, by this time next year, you will be here to dedicate your baby. In the name of Jesus, by this time next year, you will own your own business. I can't hear your amen. By this time next year, you will not be where you are. So what did God do? He cast the same net in the same sheep, in the same sea. Oh, are you ready? This time around, what Peter was trying to chase, began to chase him in the name of Jesus the things you are looking for will start to look for you 
I said, that client you have been trying to get appointment from, because you came to church, something is on your life. They will start to call you on the phone, trying to get an appointment with you. If you are the one say, it is me. Not everybody else. If you are the one, I want to shout your name to the rooftop. The very thing you have been looking for, you have been chasing for, running after, because of the encounter of the word of God. The fish that he was looking for, started to look for his net. Hear me. Nobody can shortchange your blessing because it has your name on it. That was not the only net in the lake of Gennesaret. There were many nets, but there is a particular net. I don't know who this person's net is. There is a particular net that the fish have been told, if you are going to move, move that way. I sense in my spirit, somebody here, you have been trying to knock down and catch somebody. You've done all you could. But because of the sure word of God in the house this morning, out of nowhere, you will get a call. I say you will get a call. The same businesses you have been trying to tie up that refuse to tie by the spirit of God will tie it up today in the name of Jesus. Whatever has looked elusive in your life, looked impossible in your life, the word of God has gone forth. I will not return back for it. It was a word that brought us here. And for your life to move, you will be the same word. And the Bible says, oh, I sense an anointing in this room. Somebody's life You have been frustrated, not everywhere, but it just happens to be in your area of core competence. Pastor Jesus, do I have your permission? I sense an anointing in this room to pray, a special prayer. You are not trying. Frustration is not indicative You, you are lazy. It's activity without productivity. But you see, I'm okay if I'm unproductive in other areas of my life. But surely, I wouldn't handle it when in my areas of core competence and my training. You see, I'm not a doctor. And so when I'm sick, I'm not killing myself that I don't know what to do. But I was at the American embassy the other day. And the lady asked me, she said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Louisiana. She said, for what? He said, to preach. He said, to tell them what? I cleared my truth. <laughs> oh, I said, you made a, I said in my heart, you made the biggest mistake. I began preaching to you. He said, stop, stop, stop. Your visa is approved. <laughs> oh! You have your own area. Tell anybody, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I have my other area. I don't want, I don't care. I'm not like you. But please, when you say, shall we pray? Oh, Jesus. I, I'm not like, but in my own little area, I'm able to contain Boko Haram. For the weapons of our warfare, The frustration. Some of you is in the area of your health. I don't know what it is, but there's somebody in this room who needs to come to this altar. Who has an area in his life. That you need for God to step in. Hmm. You need... The divine master to come in. 
Why did he have to come to that net? Because there are some business climates, if you don't break even, you will, you will not survive. There is a level of flow that a man needs to live in Lagos. There are some businesses that you need to break out from the existing network. If it's the same company, the same, the same, the same, you might not be the one at the top of the food chain. There are some things, not everything. And I'm not concerned about everything. But there's one particular area. Peter was a fisherman. If he should be frustrated, he surely shouldn't be in fishing. Raise your hands to the almighty God. I sense your presence here. I sense your anointing in this room. Father, do for us in the Royal Cathedral this morning. Invade our space. Invade families. Invade businesses. Invest the mind of your people. Invest their public and their private life. Let the anointing that breaks yokes, every yoke of toiling, I break it in the name of Jesus. Every yoke that the enemy has placed on your life that you toil and you don't get compensated for, in the name of Jesus, I'll break the power. Lift those hands to the Almighty God. I thank you, Heavenly Father. For when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me. We come to that rock of ages. We come to the divine one who paid a price for our liberty. He would have said, it is finished on the cross. In the same manner I speak over every man, over every woman in this place. That the yoke on your life is broken in the name of Jesus. That which keeps you localized. That which keeps you on the same spot. I sense in my spirit. Some of you, your client's profile is shifted. Is shifted because the kind of service you render is no kobo kobo that will make you break even. There are some kind of clients that have to be enclosed. There are some kind of businesses you have to enclose. There are some kind of blessings you have to enclose. Not 10,000. 10,000 is no bad. But for your assignment and the size of your assignment it's got to be something much more than that. I'm bringing a final prayer. Father, Pastor Jesse, please, could you come? Just help me pray. As I said, man, representing our Father in the faith. Let the anointing that broke through for our Father in the faith, let it manifest in the life of every man and every woman here. Please lift up your hands everywhere. For the next one minute, I need for you to open your mouth. And with your own mouth, begin to declare what you want to see. Declare what you want to see over that situation and over that circumstance. Speak it out that heaven will hear you. Now begin to speak and end to every frustration in every area of your core competence. Now declare that the light of God will shine and you will see through the darkness. Dispel that dark. Hey, shake a Dispel that dark. Matele bo sati. Dispel that dark. Leka bo soto le bo sati. The Bible says, surely there is an end. There is an end to every frustration of your life. Mm. Begin to declare benediction over every frustration of your life. There is an end. The night ends now. Let the night ends now. Today marks the end of your past and the beginning of your future. Lift your voice and pray. The same grace that raised this message upon a message, that raised this cathedral, that same grace invades your life today. Ah, somebody needs to pray.
in Jesus name now your amen has to be strong father today according to your word we decree that faith grows in this place in Jesus name faith is never passive faith is always active father lord we speak and we declare that everything that will challenge your direct word in the lives of your people is put to shame in jesus name the bible says surely there is an end and so from this altar from this place of possibility we declare surely and it comes to frustration in the name of Jesus. And it comes to every frustration in the name of Jesus. And it comes to every struggle in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the Lord said, Let there be light, and there was light. Father, over every darkness in their hearts, within their lives, in their situations in their circumstances in their finances we declare let there be light let there be light let there be light you instructed peter throw down the nets peter threw down the net he may have acted in unbelief but your grace lifted him through father for whatsoever unbelief we may have exercised let your grace overshadow it in Jesus name he caught so much fish that his neck started to break they put the net in his boat his boat started to sink he called his partners they put the balance of the fish in their, in their boat. Their boat also started to sink. All because of your word. Father, we declare today that the breakthrough that we enter into will remain unprecedented in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift our hands. The Bible says wherever your word is preached, signs and wonders will follow. We thank you for this house. We thank you for the grace over the set man, our father. We lift our voices and we say the biggest amen because this shall be the beginning of signs and not the end of it. Your word declares that the sons and daughters that you have given unto me, they are for signs and for wonders in the whole of Israel. The sons and daughters that you have given to Pastor Paul, according to your word, we declare that we are for signs and for wonders in the whole of the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord, we lift our hands and we celebrate you. We put our hands together and we adore you. We lift our voice in a shout and we exalt you. Be thou exalted, our God. Let your name be forever glorified. In Jesus' name we have prayed. While you remain standing, all his bowed, all eyes closed. When they are brought all to land, they forsook all and followed Jesus. This was what was in the mind of Peter. If one word from this man could make me this blessed, what will happen to my life when I follow him? There's something much, much bigger than what you prayed for that God wants to do in your life. But you must be a follower of Jesus. While all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, you are saying, Lord, I would follow you all the days of my life. I surrender to you. I'm not following you right now. I'm following my ways. I'm following my desires. I'm following the ways of the world. But today I make a decision to follow you. 
I want you to raise your hand if you're making that prayer to God and saying, God, I surrender my life to Christ. Wherever you are, in the balcony, in the bleachers, all over this place, you're surrendering your life to Christ. You are a backslider, you're coming to God and say, Lord, I will follow you never to go back again. You're making that prayer, raise your hand, I see that hand. I see another hand. I see another hand. I see another hand. I see more hands. And I want you to say this prayer after me, wherever you're standing, I want church to chorus along with them and pray along with them. Say, Heavenly Father. Let's say together with them, Heavenly Father. I thank you for today. I have heard your word. Your word is life. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is your only begotten son who died for me to save me, to translate me to the kingdom of light. I open my heart. I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. I surrender to you totally, completely. Be the Lord of my life. Wash away all my sins with your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. Fill me with the joy of salvation. With my heart, I believe. With my mouth, I declare that I am saved. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for every life. You said there's great joy in heaven over one soul that turns to you. Peter left all and followed. Because there was something much more than the catch of fish. He said, from today, henceforth, his assignment was altered forever. By this prayer that they've declared, you have altered by divine purpose. Altered their destinies forever. Let a new life begin. Let a new joy fill their heart. Cleanse them, wash them. Break the yoke of sin and the power of the enemy over their life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name those of you that made that prayer I want you to make your way here while the rest of us just go back to a seat if you made that prayer please come please come let's clap for them you're coming to God you are surrendering to God you want to follow God keep clapping while they make their way here and if you're among the people just come close here come 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 let's keep clapping there's a greater purpose not just that God answers your prayer. You are in the balcony, wherever you are. Please come. Please come. Please come. Let's keep clapping, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep clapping. Let's keep clapping. Make way for them as they come. Make way for them as they come. Make way for them as they come. Let's keep clapping. The Bible says there's great joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep clapping as they come. The people still coming up. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Let's keep clapping.